Hello again, Slippin' here. What does it mean to be a good person? How do I get people to like me? And is peace truly worth it, even if it means complete and total oppression? Today, we're answering these questions in sport as we work our way up the food chain to forcefully achieve world peace. Those who decide not to smile with us in our golden utopia will perish. Now if you don't know what sport is, it's a game all about evolving from cosmic slot and rising up the food chain to dominate the planet, and eventually, the universe. Our humble road to fun-filled global domination starts with us entering the primordial soup on the planet where we're thrust into an unwanted existence. Immediately, our creature, the Grumbus, is pushed into a constant struggle for survival as we hunt for our next meal. As carnivores, we must eat meat to survive and grow bigger. Now, you may be asking yourself why a peaceful race would decide to eat other creatures. And to put it simply, our brains simply haven't grown large enough yet to understand the complex nuance and intricacies of being silly, fun-loving, whimsical guys. So instead, much like a priest at a play park, we impulsively give in to our urge and after feasting on enough of our brothers and sisters to make even the most dedicated war fetishists turn away in disgust, we finally have enough DNA to evolve onto land. We grow some legs and take our first agonizing stroll onto land. And now that we're able to lay eggs, form basic communication, and engage in violent turf wars, our first job is to gain some more DNA to fuel our evolution. And to do that, we need to hunt other creatures. Before long, we came across a nest of useless looking purple blobs, and so after brutally killing one of their young, the rest simply gave up and did my job for me, as their souls were claimed and brought up to heaven by our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Thanks, Jesus. We have a quick snack before continuing on to the next nest, where we come face to face with the aliens from Disney's 2005 hit film. Chicken Little. I quickly realized I was no match for the sheer might of these weird acorn things and retreated back to my nest where I upgrade the Grumbus with a thinner frame and some noodle arms. But realizing that this does quite literally nothing to help us fight in any way, I head back to the drawing board where I give the Grumbus a tall, upright stature as well as claws and some spiked balls on his knees for maximum damage. Holy Look at all this damage! But most notably, it was here where the Grumbus developed their charming qualities, such as their peaceful eyes and fun-loving smiles. A glimpse into our whimsical future, perhaps. But behind their inviting facade, the cold, ruthless will for domination remained. But being the idiot I am, I forgot about the acorn creatures and couldn't find their nest to exact my revenge. However, we did stumble across some interesting looking dodos who humoured our attempts to make social contact with them. We do a dance and sing along with them, but it's clear they're not amused. The rejection turns our joy into a spark of cold, calculating rage, as we once again launch into another brutal attack. Was that the bite of 87? With our bellies and need for a revenge both filled, we head back to the nest and get it on with another Grumbus. Fortunately, the Grumbus are not bound by concepts such as logic, and so once again we drastically change our look before stepping back out into the world. But as we slowly tailored our designs, we continued on with the usual hunting and socializing with other tribes while experimenting with new looks, like this fucking thing. Life was going pretty well as we spent our days roaming around the meadows, frolicking with other creatures, and using my amusing looks to encourage them to join my pack. We still had our fair share share of fights, but it definitely felt like we were beginning to see the dawn of a brighter, more unified age. I messed around some more in the creature editor, making abominations like this, but something kept drawing me back to the over-exaggerated, lanky look of my blue friends, and so I doubled down on what was working, but added as many weapons to his body as I possibly could. Oh god, it's so good. Mm. Mm, so good. We were getting close to the pinnacle of evolution. I played around with a few potential options, and before long, we had it. The true Grumbus. A form designed with three times the fun and smiles. With my two Ooh. Muppet hands, my victims, uh, I mean, friends, would be so distracted with joy and wonder that we could achieve global domination without them even noticing. I locked in my final look and continued the next step. <laughs> Welcome to the tribal stage. Now, with the ability to hold objects in my mouth, hand things, 
This meant that we could develop instruments to win over the hearts of enemy tribes. We loved it! And the true nature of the Grumbus could truly shine. We set up a didgeridoo tent and equipped each member of the tribe with their own instrument. It was time for our first concert. We hit the road and hopped over to meet our first enemy tribe, where we busted out the tune of a lifetime. <laughs> So we had our first ally, and with it came our first rung on the totem pole. Now, our goal in the tribal stage involves either wiping out or allying with every tribe on the map. So we pressed on, traveling to each tribe, winning them over with our advanced instruments, until gradually our enemies grew numb to the sound of our didgeridoos and demanded more. <laughs> So we made some horns and maracas and went back out on tour, spreading the message of peace and love for our music. Peace and love, peace and love. One by one, we converted our enemies to our friends. So with the continent unified, it was time to enter the civilized age. We started out by designing the main building of our future city and gave the building a nice smile to signal our peaceful nature and appropriately named it the friend center. Next up, it was time to make some cars. I made a flying saucer, added on various wheels, tracks, claws, and other shit, and tacked on a load of other instruments to help convert other cities. Our goal in this stage was very similar to that of the tribal age, only slightly more complicated. We could either convert or destroy enemy cities while capturing spice geysers in order to produce Spore bucks, the in-game currency. Unlike in the tribal stage, however, since we were now the dominant species on the planet, we were no longer fighting against other races, but instead ourselves. You see, certain sects of the Grumbus had broken off and strayed from the light, and instead of embracing the warmth of a light-hearted, silly life, they had turned to the cold, soulless reliability of a society built on rampant militarism, expansionism, and bureaucracy. This was reflected in their boring cities, and this could simply not be allowed to go on. Before other cities had a chance to advance, we quickly converted our closest neighbors and marked our territories by redesigning their houses, entertainment centers, and factories. Soon we had a city to rival that of ancient Rome. Okay, there she is, a real city, the future. Absolutely beautiful. To say the residents were happy was an understatement, and we were overflowing with a joy we had to spread. But the enemy wouldn't go down without a fight, and soon we were locked into a territorial conquest. Now, the minimap is a little too small to pick out the precise details of what I want to show you. So instead, I'm using this map of this made up fantasy continent to show you our situation. This is us. Surrounding us on all sides are military cities who are either neutral or our enemies. So we had to be quick in converting them to our allies and capturing their spice geysers. But I realized I had made one fatal mistake. The instruments on my vehicle were very good for converting enemy cities, but very, very bad at doing damage to enemy cars. Initially, I assumed this was just because enemy vehicles were difficult to fight, but as more started swarming my cities, I was unable to hold them back. This time, being less stupid, I loaded my last save and got back to work rebuilding my old city. I doubled down by taking as many spice geysers as quickly as possible, as well as converting every city on the island as fast as possible, before they got too powerful. Soon, I had acquired a coastal city, and I took to the seas, where I built the most overpowered boat known to man. I began with our iconic saucer design, added a cockpit, as well as a huge flag at the back to showcase our peaceful intentions before decking it out with state-of-the-art, advanced targeting, precision tracking, turbo weapons. Then doused it all in a rancid color scheme, and we were in action. And then immediately got to work on our next vehicle, plane. So I made a ball, put some eyes on it, gave it the means to fly, and then overloaded it with yet more inhumane weapons. Now that my plane looked like a goldfish having a seizure while choking on a family-sized pack of straws, we were good to go. Our boats and planes were now in action. Victory was inevitable. We had the military support needed to win, but since our cars couldn't cross the ocean, I made a floating conversion machine, simply known as the Noise Ball. 
a huge yellow ball littered with enough instruments to win over the hearts of even our most bitter enemies. Capturing a few of the enemy's water-based spice geysers, we now had a booming economy, supported by child labor factories. With enough cash flowing in, we were now capable of creating endless vehicles. As a final touch, I added a swarm of bees to our arsenal, equipped with yet more instruments to make our conversion attempts even harder to resist. Gradually, one by one, each city fell into our grasp, until finally only one city remained. World peace was ours. A totally unified world, brought to total harmony in their cultish obsession for warm hugs, laughter, and music. Hey, wanna listen to some tunes? The only thing left to do now was to take to the stars, where we'd spend the next trillion years gradually expanding our empire, as we used diplomacy to ally with more and more races. As a final touch, we unlocked the Happy Ray, which allowed us to effortlessly make any creature overflow with positivity. A combination of brainwashing, diplomacy, and advanced strategic methods of keeping our allied races economically disadvantaged and reliant on us ensured an increasingly light-hearted, whimsical life for both both us and every creature in the known universe, as we sailed off into eternity with smiles on our faces.